an aquamarine longsword that the black swordsman wields alongside the elucidator with his dual wielding skill. After having acquired it from Lizbeth, Kirito used the sword in various battles, even his last one against Heathcliff, when the jumbo snapped it in half. And that is why, we're rebuilding it. Better. Now, Lizbeth forged this sword out of crystalline ingot, which turned out to be dragon poop. But instead of climbing the highest Swiss mountains to look for this non-existent dragon shite, we're gonna use 3D printing. I mean, let's be real, would've been easier to have a machine do it on autoplot for you while you go chill in AFK, right? But just like 2D printers and pictures, 3D printers also need references to print. And that's why we need a model. So let's jump into Fusion 360 and build one. So guys. Here's the fucking model. I spent around, I don't know, five, six hours modeling this thing. Uh, it's actually quite a complicated looking sword. Now I'll tell you this, I take detail, especially accuracy, very fucking seriously. So you know I definitely go the extra mile just to get these handguard as fucking accurate as possible. I think it did turn out pretty good. Rate my model 1 to 10. Now, once we have our parts cut up into pieces, let's fucking jump into Cura and make instructions for our printer. Go and start with this pointy boy right here. Flying around a bit. Boom. Personally, I like to keep a 2mm distance uh, from the build plate. Hopefully, we have a little bit of clearance if the warping fucks things up. This is the typically the settings I use for prints. You can see just easily copy it if you want. And this thing, this thing right here is just like the plugin I use so that I could time lapse. With that being said, let's hit slice. So ladies and gents, I've just about gotten my last part out of the printer and went ahead and pre-assembled it as you can see. Just from first glance, you could tell that this sort is gonna turn out amazing. Now before we get into gluing the parts together, I'm gonna explain something real quick. Remember last video I had quite a few problems with my parts warping due to the heat? Well, I found a solution for that. It's actually really simple. We do know that the cause of the warping is heat. And the solution? Also heat. Here's how I did it. So I basically just heated the deformed edges of the parts on an electric stove so that it would melt off and then I could fit the connectors easily. Now I think this will save you much more time compared to sending the connectors until it fits. But I'm gonna have to warn you on two things. One, where you heat. And two, where you hold. Now when heating your part, you only want to heat that teeny tiny part where it's pretty hard for the connector to fit in. You really do not want to get heat on the other parts of the blade or else that part is going to uh, like deform and melt away as well. Secondly, mind where you hold. This is also the safety warning as well. Obviously wear safety equipment, mask or glasses, I don't know. Whoever is knowledgeable please explain to me and the rest of the people here. Make sure you hold your parts correctly unlike this dumbass. You really do not want to grip on those edges where it's hot. I mean I wasn't hurt or anything. It's just that I nearly scrapped a part that took me around 16 hours to print. Now with that out of the way, let's just get straight to the gluing, shall we?
the sword is finally pieced together, now I'm gonna find a way to fixture the sword nice and straight until morning. Good night, girl. I'll see you tomorrow. Morning. What the fucking time is it, bro? <laughs> Six twenty in the morning. Let's check out. Let's check out in here. Good morning, mother pokers. Ladies and gentlemen, dragon shape. <laughs> Lol. All right. First impression. I'm really glad this sword finally took shape. This sword, I took so much effort in modeling, especially this part right here. I'm so glad I finally get to see it take form. And something I like about the dark propulsor is that it's got something like an oval profile on the grip. It does help my grip, so like my fingers could get lost into it much better. And uh, there's something I kind of want to complain about the design. Why the fucking spearhead, bro? I honestly don't understand. Like, why would you put like a spearhead on a long sword? You're to slash with this thing. When the tip actually get lots? I mean, whoever is more knowledgeable, please correct me. This sword actually feels pretty nice to thrust with. I think this sword is very balanced. Would not wobble up or down, something like that. I'm very, very excited to finish this sword. Now that finally we got all the glues together, let's just quickly go ahead and patch up these. Oh, shall we? I finally got all the holes in the sword patched up, but now it looks pretty messy now, doesn't it? That's why we're gonna have to sand it flat. The dark repulsor has a lot of small and intricate details, so I think I'm gonna have to swap to my engraver on this one. Okay, I just about got the last bit sanded down. I'm pretty satisfied with the surface finish at this point, so we can move on to the painting. And I gotta say, the dark repulsor is pretty intimidating in front of the It has four different colors, overlapping patterns, and oh boy, don't get me started on these details. Wow. Luckily, thanks to the Lucidary fiasco where I took on the challenge to complete the ruined paint job in one night, I get a shit ton of XP and leveled up my painting skills by a lot. Now I'm pretty confident I can take on the challenge with painting. But for starters, I'm gonna go with a coat of primer to even out the texture and make it easy for me to make a mistake. Then, I'm gonna go to paint in the following order. Opulent turquoise, patrol, pastel blue, moss green on the handle, and finally pastel blue again. So without further ado, let's hit it.
finally done, boys. Guys, the final layer of painting is done. And now it's time to unmask this beauty. I like it, Kaji. The dragon shine. The dang repulsive. The dark repulsive. I'm really happy and satisfied that the paint job turned out great. And uh, let's take our first paint, shall we? Looking pretty good, boys. Now, uh, you guys remember the last time I tested the elucidator. Well, yeah, we're also gonna test it on the dark propulsor. I'm gonna call it the pennant, by the way. The pennant is basically an upper right to bottom left switch, which should like enough momentum to snap a weak 3D printed sword in half. If the sword can survive this blow, it's worth it. So, uh, what do I do? Let's go, let's go, shall we? You guys ready? All right, that was pretty good. Go on with the demo, boys. Check these guns, bro. Come on, come in, bro. That was the Dark Repulsor. I had an absolute ton of fun making the sword and the video. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching me in the process. Now you might be thinking, Oh, I want to build my own Dark Repulsor. Well, I got you, homie. Here, take the file. Check the link in the description below. And you can print your own Dark Repulsor. Like and subscribe to enjoy the video. And I'll see you guys next time when I build Asuna's Lambent's Light. Until then, say hello.